Uh, all right, uh, our uh, very last uh, champion I'd like to introduce is uh, Keystone e Engineering. These guys make the propellant that's in the tanks of the uh, satellites that uh, run your GPS system. I don't know if there are any Hollywood producers in the audience, uh, but I know you all know somebody. I, speaking of uh, GPS, I had this great idea for an action thriller. You know how these cars can parallel park themselves now and you know do all, practically drive themselves? I had this idea for this rogue satellite that goes, that goes bad, takes over the automobiles, starts steer, locks the doors and starts steering us all for the Grand Canyon. It's called Navigeddon. Anybody? <laughs> Bruce Willis, I think we could get attached to this thing. He drives a 73 Ford Bronco. They all make fun of him in Act One for, uh, all right, I'll, we'll talk. Um, let's, uh, I'm telling you, I could see it on the poster now. Uh, anyway, where were we? Yes, our uh, very final champion, Keystone. Let's uh, all enjoy the video, please. This place is amazing. We do things that other companies only dream of doing. We have a group of people that is like family. We all like each other, we care about each other, and they know that their contribution is accepted and respected, and that's very important. Keystone is still in California because this is where our talent is. Here in California, you've got a very, very strong supplier base, and you've got a very, very strong manufacturing employee base. a lot of money on energy. We spend an awful lot of money managing regulation and we want to be good citizens. We plan on doubling our revenue in the next 10 years and that is something that we're we're using to drive innovation, new ways of manufacturing, new ways of doing things, new product lines, new technologies and we're actively pursuing the engineering talent right now to support that. You know, you could take a machine shop class, you could take a woodworking class, you could take a printmaking class. And now, because of the cuts to education, a lot of those resources have dried up for kids. And there really is no apprenticeship programs that start in high school. So finding talent has, has, has really been a challenge. And I'm a uh, metal spinner here. Keystone has provided me the uh, opportunity to provide for my family. I've been with the company for almost 20 years. We've got an employee, Ray Marquez. He's now our quality manager. Ray's first job here was uh, in the janitorial department. And he has literally worked his way up through every aspect of the business and now manages our quality department. You're not going to find a bunch of people who can spin titanium, so these are homegrown skills. And these, you know, we identify a candidate that we think has potential, and then we groom them and grow them into what we need them to be. And the way that we're able to keep them is by treating them right. Whew, dodge a bullet there. Uh, Ken, for a second, I thought these guys were Keystone to Keystone Light. You know what I mean? I thought we were going to... You guys were going to have to square off in the hallway out there and really just throw down. I didn't, I didn't read the cards. These guys, you know, they had nothing to do with beer. So don't, don't worry. There's only one drunken sheriff in this town, and that's, uh, that's you. But you're going to get a deputy real soon. Uh, I'd like to introduce Keystone's Director of Innovation, Wayne Tuttle. Thank you. I would like to thank the CMTA for this. This is a wonderful honor. We're very proud to be recognized this way, and it's wonderful to be able to stand up before you and actually represent this fine group of people that I work with. I wanted to mention a couple things that have been said today that I thought were really poignant in, in a lot of ways, and one was hearing about Joel McHale's swimming pool, yeah. and I was thinking about experiences that I've had in the city where I live, where I've wanted to do things and it, it was very painful. 
and in other companies that I've worked with where I've seen a lot of problems. And I, I have to say that as I sit there and I listen to these things, I grinned. And, and people are like frowning and they're saying, well, this is really bad. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, they have to go through that. Let me tell you what I, what I mean by that and, and why I was smiling. I feel very fortunate because although California has some issues, it's, you know, to make up for it with weather, I believe, but we have some issues. It's cheaper to do business in Texas, places like that. Energy costs are very high here. But we have these tremendous resources of people that help us, and while we really want the state to start doing more, I can tell you that at the local level, we've experienced very, very wonderful support. And one of the people who's up on stage with me, Barbara, we asked her to come up and, and become embarrassed. She's the regional manager who supports us at the LA County Economic Development Group. Uh, committee, co corporate? Corporation, corporation yeah. The, the folks from the LA County. She is a miracle worker. We just did a major expansion in our facility in Long Beach, California, and she was able to make sure that it went smoothly, opened doors for us, introduced us to the right people. So it's, while it's tough in some places in California, and I appreciate that, and I heard some people talk about they were having you know, frustrations with expansion, we didn't. We didn't because Barbara, and others, and I want to include the city of Long Beach. I would, now with what I know, I would never expand a business in any place other than Long Beach. You cannot believe the support that we had and the willingness of the city to step up and bring manufacturing back. They're wonderful, we appreciate them. We're doing as well as we are, not only because of our wonderful people that you see here, but because we have local government that supports us. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. I'd like to uh, end by telling you a very uh, heartfelt story about Seth MacFarlane trying to build a tennis court. Now again, <laughs> it's hard not to become emotional. <laughs> These poor rich white guys can't get a tennis court built. <laughs> Your heart goes out to them. A lot of these guys are forced to join, join clubs in order to play tennis. Do you understand me, people? It's gotten that bad. 